Now, uh, coming to Lloyd, Lloyd Curtis, uh, you are the CEO at uh, Possibility Practitioners. Uh, just, it, 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 and I think in a very, very short response, I'd like you to, to tell us what, uh, what being a possibility thinker really is and how one becomes a possibility thinker. Thank you so much. Um, a few years ago, and this is the, the history of possibility practitioners, um, it was just supposed to be a trip uh, to, to Dubai. And so when we landed there, we got to see a lot of things that those guys had done concerning Dubai. One of the things that is so amazing is the history behind that. And uh, when, when I had to uh, pay attention to their history, I got to discover that those guys practice possibility. Now, this is a desert land that they've transformed into what we now call, um, I think it's one of the most attractive places globally as we speak right now. One of the things that moved them is what I want to communicate with us and the mindset that we need to, uh, to run with. Many, many years ago, the, the, the king of Dubai um, got to realize that there was something that the Arabs had done that slowly was slipping off them. In their convictions, they said, for example, that the tallest skyscrapers, you know buildings, right? The tallest skyscrapers in the world were initially done by the Arabs and they were referring to the pyramids of Egypt just right here in Africa. And so with that in mind, they decided to construct what is currently the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. And in constructing that, one question was asked to the king because it was quite costly. He was asked, are we going to recover whatever we're going to spend? in constructing this tower. And so the king said, it's not about us recovering anything about it. He says it's about who we are. The issue of us being the best is a historical fact. Way before civilization, the Arabs were the best uh, in terms of infrastructure. They had the tallest skyscrapers in the world. So we are doing it for us so that each time an Arab looks at this tallest tower in the world. It reminds them that they are supposed to be the best and it should consistently be so. And so they began to communicate that to the people because you see, if we begin to inculcate such a mindset, people begin to realize that we are positioned for a certain class in society. And so they, they tabled it out that way. As we speak right now, they are constructing another tower which is taller than the tallest building in the world, still in Dubai. So it tells you that they are ready to be the best throughout the many years that we are going to uh, look at. But then the question is, are they any different from us? Absolutely not. We have the same brain cells. In fact, most of the inventions that we have currently, for example, even the cell phone was discovered, was actually invented by an African. Most of the inventions that we see right now were originally done by the African. But it's because we never had such discussions that would make an African know, for example, what Mr. Siwale was communicating here, where if you were to log onto Facebook, you, you are giving an American 30 something cents. So automatically they become richer than you are. But then how can we use that information that we've, we've, we've acquired now to cause us to be different from the rest of the world? I think to become a possibility practitioner, one needs to be deliberate about it. In 30 seconds, a few years ago, I was invited on ZNBC TV, and then, as it were, I was asked a very technical question. One that I wasn't prepared for, and it was live on TV. You want to run away, but you have to sit there because it's live. Well, I responded to it, and immediately after that, I went to Google to check whether what I'd given was statistically correct. And then I was saved by chance. It was so correct. <laughs> by chance. And so what I did after that, I made up my mind to acquire as much information as possible. And today I thrive on that. It's a policy on my part. Every month I buy a minimum of four books and I read them. It's been a discipline for, for two years running now.
So for us to be taken into a, a for us to really walk into the realm of possibility, we need to be very, very deliberate about the things that we do. And so we've redefined possibility at possibility practitioners. We don't define it the textbook way. And the bigger we become, our definition will be adopted as the main definition of possibility. So we say possibility is not defined as a statistical chance whether it can be done or it cannot be done. We define possibility from the fact that if something can happen, then we insist that it should happen. We gray out the, 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 the aspect that it may not. So we define possibility rather from the aspect that if something can happen, then we insist that no matter what happens, let that happening happen. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Curtis.